called David Clendon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora koutou. Uh, and just before uh, speaking to the matter in hand, I'd just like to add the Greens' acknowledgement of the, uh, the dreadful news we've had this afternoon from the West Coast and to um, offer our manaaki o Araha to those most closely affected. Um, my colleague Kevin Haig is returning to his home on the coast as uh, quickly as he may, and of course we'll make proper acknowledgement of that matter uh, with the rest of the House tomorrow afternoon. Um, the business of the evening, of course, is to um, make some commentary about this bill, which certainly is a better bill coming from Select Committee than what went into it. Um, and that's a credit to the committee, I think, and indeed to some of the submitters. Some of the uh, obvious flaws of the original bill have been remedied, some of the gaps filled and some of the worst, uh, most undesirable parts removed. Um, clearly, this, the, the genesis of this bill came from the, uh, the ACT Party, a support party to the government, which was revealed in the, uh, the Minister for Local Government's first speech on this bill, where he noted that this bill was a result of an, uh, part of the supply and confidence agreement with the national government. And I fear that that um, genesis, perhaps, is reflected in the, the, the bill, the aspects of the bill that the Greens will continue to not support beyond um, or through its uh, further stages. To refer to some of the um, improvements to the bill, clearly it has been noted that the words added to Clause 7, having regard to a wide range of communities of interest and populations in New Zealand society, certainly has broadened the scope of the bill. It has broadened the capacity of this uh, Commission when it uh, doubtless will be established, to actually do its work and to give proper consideration uh, where the original drafting of the bill was silent on that. It was very much a narrow, overly narrow regulatory approach, um, which would have led to little more than a witch hunt in the public service and a very um, aggressive assault indeed on the, pub on the private sector indeed. It is appropriate and a distinct improvement that uh, the, the work program of the Commission will be less determined by the Minister, that the Ministers will be obliged to consult with the Commission about terms of reference, or of course in the original uh, drafting of the Bill these things were very much in the Minister's hands and the Minister's control, and that would not be a desirable thing. The requirement to consult between the Minister and the Commission certainly will aid or at least add a little to the independence uh, of this Commission and its task. I would uh, reiterate the statement made by the previous Speaker about the value of the Commission being able to publish draft reports, because there it will be possible to see what the Commission genuinely thinks, its, uh, its work processes, its thought processes, before the final draft comes out, and any sub substantial changes between a draft and a final report clearly would good, give scope for public or indeed political questioning of who or what influenced any dramatic changes. We have seen already that um, Boards of inquiry, such as the Royal Commission into the situation in Auckland Governance, uh, the, original, the report that was produced there was cast aside, and uh, we have a very inferior outcome. And if this was to occur with the Productivity Commission, at least we would have a sense of, of what the Commission first thought or where it went. The point has been made that the, uh, the head of the head or the chair, the designate of this um, Commission to be, has already been appointed. And frankly, the Greens see that as rather an abuse of the parliamentary process, or perhaps, I should say, it would appear to be treating Parliament with some disdain to appoint the head of an organisation when the very existence, the nature, the function and the roles of that organisation are still being discussed in a select committee before it had even come back to the House for second reading, committee third reading. And in that there is no explicit or indeed implied criticism of the gentleman chosen to lead this. I don't know the fellow. Um, his CV is very impressive, it must be said. He may well be an ideal choice. But it seems remarkable that such an appointment would be made in advance of a proper parliamentary process being completed. So there's been made much, or much made of the fact that this, this Commission is modelled quite closely, some would say, on the Australian Productivity Commission. 
And indeed, there are references, there are similarities here. But there are also some significant differences, both in the model, in the legislation, and in the context within which this Commission will work. It is noted that the, the agency, the New Zealand Productivity Commission, will be able on its own initiative to undertake and publish research about productivity matters, to develop its institutional knowledge, support its inquiry and to promote public understanding of these issues. And that's well and good and it's appropriate that such a body should be able to do independent work. But I seriously doubt whether in fact this Commission will have the capacity, the wherewithal to do any such work. We are told it will have a budget of some $5 million a year, which is not a significant sum of money, again given that the Auckland inquiry consumed some $3 million to make a, admittedly quite a large investigation. Um, clearly the requirement that the first task or tasks of the Commission will be to fulfil the, the roles, the particular um, the tasks given to it by the Minister. It will have very little time, capacity, resource, clearly, to do independent work, unlike its Australian equivalent, working on a much larger stage, much larger budgets available to it, where there could be some genuine self-initiated work done by that. We believe it's rather peculiar that within this uh, bill for a productivity commission, there is no definition offered of what productivity is or what it means in this context. And that's quite unusual, given that that word productivity, even in the context in which this uh, Commission will work, is, is open to a significant range and a diversity of definition or interpretation. And it does seem strange that this legislation contains no definition, and nor does it contain a clear set of directions as to what the Commission ought to do, what its uh, what its broader objectives ought to be, again in contrast, in distinct contrast with the Australian example. The Australian um, legislation, for example, says that the Commission must strive to improve the productivity and economic performance of the economy to reduce unnecessary regulation. It ought to encourage the development of efficient and competitive Australian industry. And we note that there is very little focus on industry in this bill. The words workforce or workplace do not occur or do not appear, as has been noted by a couple of the submitters. And I'll return to that point. The Australian Commission is charged with facilitating adjustment to structural change, which some would see as some way from a definition or a reflection of a focus on productivity. So, in short, this, this legislation does not replicate the Australian model sufficiently to give us any hope or confidence that it will replicate the undoubted success of the Australian Commission. The CTU and the PSA both made very substantive and useful and uh, helpful um, submissions to this bill and both regretted that within it there is no focus on workplace. There is no um, intention, it's obvious, that the, the workforce should be uh, a player in this or those bodies representing the workforce. Lifting productivity, as the PSA pointed out, is clearly not simply a matter for the private sector, given that the Crown expenses account for about 35 per cent of the economy, so public as well as private issues clearly are at stake here. What we could more usefully do than this very narrowly focused, poorly resourced um, Productivity Commission is follow the example of the UK and look more towards the development, the establishment of a sustainability commission, as the UK has done with significant success. In its short life, that commission has served to fulfil its goals of living within environmental limits, achieving a sustainable economy, using sound science responsibly, promoting good governance. Already has identified savings of many hundreds of millions of dollars for the government, and that would be a model that the Green Party could support. Kia ora koutou.